Morning, it's Jonathan for Gym Warehouse. Today we're in the workshops and we're going to be looking at how to make up some of our classic steel plate dumbbells. Now we sell a lot of these, we sell them from sizes from 2.5 kilos up to 130 kilos, we sell them individual or in sets. But we also get a lot of customers that like to buy the components and they make them themselves. So the components are the plates, the handles, and the steel collars. Now, when making up a dumbbell, you're going to need various tools. You need access to a fabricator, or if you want to do it all with yourselves, you need a weld, you're going to need a saw, a grinder, a linisher, and a few other bits and pieces, tools like a paintbrush, um, spray, and a vernier. So today, we're going to look at making up a, a 22.5 kilo dumbbell. I've already selected the plates here. You're also going to need a set of scales. So the first thing to do is to just weigh all these products. Now it's worth bearing in mind, if we put all these on the scales here, this handle we're going to cut to lengthen a bit. So we're going to lose a bit of weight when we cut this handle. So that's coming in just about 22.5. So that, those are the, the items we're going to use. The plates, you have got to bear in mind the increments of the plates. The smallest plate that we supply is a 0.5 kilo plate. So if you think about it, if you've got two of those on a dumbbell, the increments are one kilo, so that's the closest you can get. However, we also do 0.75s and 1.25s and 1s, so using those, you can get within plus or minus 0.5. Now, if you want to go more accurate than that, yes, we can do that, but we're going to have to make up some lazy cut discs, um, similar to this, but about the 200 gram mark, so you can make more accurate. So you just need to consider just how accurate you want to go um, when making your dumbbells. So the first thing to do is determine how long your, your dumbbell handle has to be. So imagine you're going to have half the plates on the other side, you're going to have your collar there as well. So if I get the vernier here, and what we're going to do is measure the depth of the hole. So we place that in there, that gives us the depth or the of all the weights that are going to go on this handle. So it also depends how you're going to weld this. So if we cut that to length there, that would be flush with the weights. Generally, we would fillet weld this handle. So we'd cut it off about five mils too long so that when this washer goes on, there's a fillet there and we get a nice weld around the, the handle. The other way of welding these is to puddle weld them. So that, to do that, you cut them short and then you puddle weld it. Now I'm not going to get the, into the ins and outs of the welding, but what that would give you, it would give you a tighter dumbbell and a, uh, a flush and more attractive finish. The only thing is, we do tend to find the fillet welder stronger. So that's up to yourselves. Um, the other thing you might want to do with these handles, you don't need to do it on heavy duty ones, but if the dumbbell is likely to be abused, or it's a very heavy um, dumbbell you're putting together, you might want to weld these internal collars. Now with a lot of force, these could move, so you can weld them here and then paint them prior to assembling the dumbbell. We're going to do that on this one today, but generally we wouldn't recommend it on a small dumbbell. Prior to cutting this to length, you need to consider the chrome plating. Now the chrome plating is made of chrome, there might be copper and nickel there as well. Now if you weld straight onto that chrome, it can be done, but you're going to get some kind of a weird alloy on your weld, it's going to be a lot weaker for it. So to get the best weld, you want to grind off or remove that chrome there. It can be done by grinding or in a lathe. Um, the other thing to bear in mind also is when you're welding it, if you've got nickel there and other bits and pieces, it's going to create various noxious, noxious fumes. So you want to make sure you're wearing appropriate PPE when you do that. Okay, so we're going to take this one now. We're going to go cut it to length. Obviously, removing the chrome first. Um, and we're going to weld these collars on the inside and, and paint them. And we'll come back here and look at assembling the dumbbell. Okay, so we've got a handle cut to length, we removed the chrome, we did that in a lathe this time, just it gives a better finish and it's quicker and more convenient. We've welded this internal collar and put some spray paint on there to get it to match the, the chrome. So what we want to do now is just look at these plates and make sure they're going to fit 
one thing to bear in mind with this plate is the logo. They've got the logo on one side. So if you want the logo showing, it's best to have it on the inside of the um, dumbbell, on the inside, on the outside, on the outside. Conversely, you can obviously have them facing each other so that no logo showing. So if we get the um, handle, one logo on the inside, one on the outside, offer up our collar. You can see there, it's a nice finish there. We've got well, between five and 10 mil showing, so we're gonna get a nice strong fillet weld there. So what we're gonna do now is take this to the welder, we'll get, weld this in situ, linish it off, paint it, and then obviously eventually we can add the, the weight number on the outside and we tend to just paint that on by hand. Um, when you're gonna spray this after it's welded, recommend using a light black spray, a matte spray, same as the plates here. If you use a thick paint, it's likely to chip. So the dumbbell's gonna to hit together, it's gonna to chip. The thin plate, it's not gonna chip off, it's just gonna mark it on that one small area. So that pretty much concludes the manufacturing process of our classic dumbbell. So we've got welds on either end. On this one, we welded the internals painted the ends um, and also we painted the inside where we weld here as well. Um, obviously with this type of dumbbell, the classic dumbbell, the, the ends are loose, they will rotate. Now if you don't want to do that, if you want fixed ends, obviously you've got other styles to go for and we have in the past used a spring mechanism um, which creates um, a lot of friction on these and stops them rotating. But to do that you do need a 100 tonne press. Um, and a far more comprehensive workshop to make those up. So it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. Um, so for this one now, all that remains to do is paint the numbers on. Um, you can use a stencil for this, but we tend to do it by hand with an artist brush. Um, and the paint, we just use Hammerite, um, a smooth white. Um, it's a lot thicker paint, but you need more colour density to, to show these up. Obviously, the advantage of this style of dumbbell you can rework them if someone abuses them and they get damaged and they be reworked. And obviously, with a long time and the number wears off, starts wearing off, it can just be touched up very easily.